Hey guys, so here is the latest addition to the uh, test equipment in the workshop. This is the Interstate F77 Wobulator or Sweep Generator. Um, eBay purchase for about 40 bucks. Um, according to the seller, it came out of a lab and it was working. We will find out in due course. Um, the first <laughs> Uh, reaction I guess is it is extremely dirty um, looks like it was a in a very uh, nicotine intense environment um, the other initial uh, thing that strikes me is none of these controls look like they have been adjusted or moved for a long time because if I move a control out of the way you can see the change in color um, from where it has been sitting for years and years and years <laughs> so I think before I could uh, start messing with this thing we're gonna have to give it a good clean um, because yes otherwise it would make me squeamish um, so when I said this thing needs a clean I don't think I'm exaggerating here's a little bit of the before and after uh, but this is gonna take a while almost done with the first pass um, I found alcohol to be the best at getting whatever this is off. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit better. <coughs> at least it's not freaking me out now. Um, so I've given the front face uh, an initial clean. Uh, the knobs still need cleaning and they all look really manky. I cleaned uh, this couple right here just to see what it's like. And uh, yeah, it's going to take a while because... Uh, even though alcohol is the only thing that would clean the panel here, um, it's good old washing up liquid and warm water that works on these knobs. So the, I tried the alcohol, didn't seem to have too much of an impact. So uh, the muck on those is obviously not the same muck that was on uh, here. Um, power cord seems uh, in reasonably good condition. Uh, not the uh, mains plug though. I don't think that's been. Doesn't look like that's been plugged in for quite a while. We get rid of that transformer case looks okay some rust on the cover here but no biggie Let's see if the fuse in here is uh, intact looks to be okay guys here's the first look at the inside of this beast um, I will confess it took me a little while to figure out how to open up the case because uh, it's two two bolts at the at the bottom and that's it then the whole thing slides out but I removed those two bolts and I think it was just from never having been removed for a long time it was stuck <laughs> so we got there in the end um, initial impressions are very good very high quality construction um, built for maintenance you know it's typical of that period I think of uh, the manual is copyright 75 um, so like this board here is on a hinge at the bottom and then there's two screws up here. Whole thing drops down. Manual wasn't the easiest thing in the world to find but I did find uh, an outfit online selling them and so I bought uh, one on CD and uh, it has extensive information on how all the circuitry works and how to calibrate and set it up. Just didn't have any information on how to take it out of the case. <laughs> um, and on the business end of things, we have uh, 70s analog heaven. <laughs> lots of discretes, uh, lots of 7400 series and uh, CA3000 series uh, chips everywhere, gazillions of trimmers, uh, etc. The only, um, so I didn't see any sign of any previous work in here. And right now, the only thing that's worrying me. Uh, which could turn out to be very serious, we'll see, hopefully not, is uh, signs of rust. More specifically, on the uh, on the wafer switches, uh, which one am I on here? Uh, I'm on this one. So I don't know if it comes out in the camera, but like most wafer switches that I've come across are sort of open on one end so you can see the wiper and the contacts and then not from the other side. These guys seem to be completely sealed. 
So you can see the wiper or the contacts from either side. However, where the two halves join, there is lots of green discoloration, which looks like it might be uh, rust. Uh, and so, uh, because they're closed like this, I don't know if you could squirt a little bit of uh, dioxid in there or not. Um, so that's the only big concern I have right now. And since these uh, selector switches clearly have not been used or moved for a long, long time, um, yep, it is possible that we got some contact problems in here. Um, but that's the only thing I've found so far. Um, so I think based on that, we'll probably hook it up to the Variac. Uh, it's set for 230 volts, and we'll probably set the old Variac for 220 or something, and then fire it up and see what happens. Um, so we're plugged into Variac, set to about 220, and here goes. We have a power light on, so we'll give it a minute to settle in. I don't smell any. Okay, I'm going to let this uh, just cook for a little while before I go doing anything else. So I'll be back later. Well guys, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, I have, I thought if I set it to 15 volts output, peak to peak, Set it to sine wave, set it to AC coupled, set it to continuous, set it to about a meg, so it's a hundred K times whatever's on here, which is 10. Turn off the sweep pulse. Uh, and yeah, I would have expected to get a straight sine wave out of the thing, but I don't. When I put it on triangle, which it's on now, this is what the scope puts out. It's kind of a clipped triangle, but if I change it to sign, it doesn't uh, change a lot. And if I wiggle the uh, selector switch here, it, it can kill it completely. Nothing comes out. Um, so I suspect those selector switches are dodgy. In thinking about what to do with these um, wafer switches, I've had some excellent suggestions on the forum. Um, uh, for instance, using a, a tiny drill and drill through the uh, the casing, and then basically inject uh, lots of dioxide with a syringe or whatever to uh, flood the inside, and then give it a good clean out. Um, and that's definitely uh, part of the plan, uh, which we, we may get to that. However, I would like to see inside one just to see how bad the damage is, because like. Switch cleaner and stuff will work once the gunk is gone, but if there's a load of rust gunk in here, um, then just slushing it around with switch cleaner isn't going to be enough. So this one right here is the best candidate to remove and have a look at, because it's just got the wafer, single wafer switch and a trim pot combination. Um, and so that looks like the best candidate. Um, so to get that out of there, in theory, I just unsolder it, take the um, knobs off the end, and pull it through. Um, however, life is never that simple. So around the back, this board is in the way. Because the uh, trim pot I want is sort of on the main board, around about right here. So, I mentioned before that I was impressed with the quality of this thing. Um, and how it was built for uh, maintainability um, and so I thought I gotta show you this because without the manual I don't think I ever would have figured this out but it's as I said there's two hinges here and two bolts here holding it in but when you undo these two uh, bolts it's not that easy because there are sets these uh, here are the contacts for a whole bank of wafer switches which go through here, and there's another one here. Um, so, the way it works is you take the knobs off, 
this whole board with the hinge runs on a rail here which you loosen off and then with a little bit of jiggery pokery you slide the whole thing back and gently tip it down and it even has let me see if I can show it to you and when you switch the board and it even has uh, panels replicating what's on the front here so that you know so that you know where you are so this whole thing still works while that board is tipped down so I gotta say that's pretty impressive stuff um, bad news is when I look at these switches here yeah that green stuff is everywhere <laughs> luckily it only seems to be these though um, and so I don't know I mean there is some other signs of rust on the case of these pots but um, yeah so so I think the one I want to take out is is this row of pins here I'm not sure if all of them are needed or how many and then there's these three here which is undoubtedly the uh, the trim pot uh, on the other side okay so here is this control uh, removed um, and this mechanical front section is screwed on right the way through the wafer to the uh, to the back with a screw here and a screw here so the minimum I expect to happen when I undo this is that the uh, shaft will come away from the uh, wafer but then I'll find out whether or not the wafer itself comes apart or whether it doesn't <laughs> okay we're gonna find out yep I seem to be out of luck because uh, what happens is the uh, the outer shaft comes away leaving the inner shaft connected to the pot and here is the uh, here is the problem child but the um, the rust certainly seems to be centered on the uh, on the inner shaft here where it goes into the switch so uh, yep we'll uh, spend some time faffing around with this and then we'll do sort of ohmic checks to see if we're getting nice low resistance values um, actually there's holes on this side of it so uh, and on that side I wonder if it's the same for the others I didn't notice those holes that might save me a lot of trouble yeah it's also it's all going to be down to how much gunk because I can definitely get a uh, switch cleaner in here through the holes but I don't know if you can see but this guy here is a wiper and I can certainly see green coming through this transparent piece so anyway we shall get the old cotton buds out and we shall do some cleaning and see where we go so here we are all back together um, there did not seem to be a lot of green gunk on the inside of the switch mechanism uh, and so with any bit of luck in the same way that there was some green on some of this metal it's just really the surfaces that were exposed to the um, to the environment uh, that started corroding but it hadn't gone all the way down in um, at least that's my hope so I've given it a good squoosh up with the oxid or my local equivalent um, and uh, lubricated and whatever and we'll put it all back but I think for the other ones <coughs> because there are one two three four five six seven and probably the same on the other side there's probably 14 or 15 more of these guys so I think we're gonna try the um, 
give it a clean up and squish with the contact cleaner in situ and see how that works so day three um, I've now um, squirted loads of contact cleaner into all of the wafer switches top and underneath all of the potentiometers as well giving them a good exercise um, and so I'm gonna leave it like that for now and move on to other things um, so as I believe I mentioned it's written up that the uh, tantalum caps of this era have been known to be problematic according to the parts list there were 27 of these guys in here that's the bad news the good news is 24 of them are the same value so the tantalums are on order um, and I guess what I'll do is I'll take a few out and see if I can test them and decide whether or not I do a whole gunshot replace or not we'll see at least I'll have them uh, these three large guys here on the power supply um, I know it's in circuit measuring but they're 3000 microfarad 25 volts uh, this one right here uh, lower left um, he measures fine uh, this one on the right measures about 2000 microfarads and this guy up here on my little uh, Agilent cap tester um, or cap it doesn't register at all it won't uh, it won't show a value similarly with this one which I'm assuming is because of how it's in circuit um, just curious that these two guys are okay but struggling with that one anyway um, just to be safe since I was ordering caps I've ordered some replacements for those and if I need to put them in I'll put them in um, and so while I'm waiting for parts to come um, I shall be uh, reading up on the manual um, which is pretty comprehensive I mean it uh, it's called an instruction manual so it gives a whole the circuit descriptions how they work uh, we see all the controls and, and what they do and all that stuff um, then it gives a whole section on calibrating how you calibrate it uh, and then the actual circuit diagram itself um, has scope waveforms it tells you what test point to put the scope on how you set the scope what the uh, vertical and horizontal settings are what the sweep is and so on how the trigger is set and what your waveform should look like so that will undoubtedly be helpful if this thing doesn't just jump into life at some point um, uh, before I switched it off last night I did some voltage checks and all the voltages are low um, so I'm not sure if that's because something isn't set properly or um, something is dragging it down we'll, we'll get to that uh, once I have some components uh, as potential replacements um, interesting project yeah uh, definitely hoping I get this one sorted out time will tell <laughs>